Mmm. Ah. Hey, fellas. Welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part one of, to me, is 148 scale BF109 E3. Now, this isn't something that I normally do on my channel. I mean, it's a really easy mundane kit. And you're thinking, why is he doing that? <laughs> well, I've been away from modeling for about a month and a half, two months. And trying to get back into it, I've really lost my mojo. You know, I picked up a couple kits trying to get back into to, to doing models again. And uh, I just, I got frustrated and it just wasn't working out. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to pick one of the easiest kits that I have. Uh, these are like, I don't know, I got this one for like, I think $15. But uh, I looked on eBay, you can get these anywhere from like $20 to $35 shipped, um, depending on where you get it at. So really easy, inexpensive kit. Takes a few days to put together, probably another day or two to paint. So I've been working on this off and on for the last three or four days, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, so this is going to be a little bit longer than a lot of my other videos, and I'm going to get a little more in-depth. Uh, some might find it boring. Some might find it uh, informative. Uh, but to be honest with you, there's just not a whole lot here. So, you know, in order to get material for a video, I, I got to I gotta put, put uh, stuff that I normally cut out and put it in there. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video, and uh, let's get on with it. All right, fellas, so uh, this is the BF109 E3 148 scale by Tamiya, and I've built a couple of these before, I think. I know I've built a, a few uh, BF109s either by Tamiya or Hasagawa or both. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I'm, as you can see, I've already unwrapped this, but they're basically two sprues, so it's a real simple little kit, good to get your mojo, mojo back. Uh, I did steal the pilot at some point. Um, I don't know when that was or what I used it for, but I stole the pilot out of there a while back. And uh, so I do not have a pilot for it, which is no big deal. Uh, the detail's really nice, nice and crisp and clean. The panel lines are nice and neat. Now there's a few little um, areas where there's some rivet detail, like right along the bottom of the wing, but that's it. So I don't know if the actual uh, BF 109s. If the if the rivet detail is very prominent, uh, if if it is, I may come back with a Rosie the Riveter and and uh, and add some rivet detail. Uh, but then again, I may not. Who knows? We'll we'll see how that goes when I get there. But uh, the glass, the clear part, is really nice, uh, and it looks like there's, for the most part, where the frame meets the clear part, there's a nice demarcation where the frame is raised up, and the reason that's important is because when I make my masks, I'll just lay down my Tamiya tape and burnish it into the edges and then use an X-Acto blade and cut it right on the clear part. Now, if they're, if the demarcation isn't very good or it's really soft, it's kind of hard to do that. So it looks like these are pretty good. This back piece eh, may not be quite as good, so uh, it may be somewhat difficult back there, but we'll get it figured out. And we'll run through how I do that. I know I've shown it before on a 30-second scale BF-109. But um, there we go. The uh, I'll probably just use the Tamiya decals. They, they're not good. I mean, let's, let's be honest. The Tamiya decals just suck. But um, we'll try to get them to work. And if not, then we'll figure something else out. <laughs> uh, I don't know. They're just really thick. I don't know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do something with them. Either way, uh, I'm gonna get cracking, start uh, peeling stuff off sprues. I assume that I have to start with, I don't know, have to, but I assume I'm gonna be starting with the, the cockpit. And that looks to be the case here. And uh, all right, so I'm gonna get on with this and see you in a bit. All right, fellas, so I've got the cockpit painted up. And to be honest with you, I just threw down a coat of German gray and then did some, uh, just a little bit of brush painting, not much. I did add some seat belts with some plastic card that I'd melted and formed into seat belts. You know, not the best solution. The uh, the cockpit on this kit is rather rudimentary and I didn't go into, in, into great detail. I just wanted to throw some color in there because in a lot of my builds and in, 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 in particular this build, I'm gonna close the canopy. So, um, you know, I'm of the philosophy that if I'm going to close the canopy, 
Um, that's really not going to be a focal point, so I'm not going to waste a whole bunch of time on on really detailing it out. And uh, you know, at this small scale, I don't, I really don't think it's that big of a deal to to just throw some paint in there. And you know, I was neat with it, but I didn't, you know, I didn't do any dry brushing, I didn't do any pre shading or post shading or anything like that. Um, you know, you know, with when uh, with this kit, I'm. Uh, it's gonna just be displayed with a closed canopy, so it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Now, I did mask the canopies off. Uh, it took me about maybe 45 minutes to do all of these. It wasn't the easiest. The demarcation wasn't as good as I, I thought it was among, uh, along the frame. Plus, it's really small, so it's really hard to get in there. I've got this little piece glued in the back and uh, with a little bit of Tamiya Extra Thin. Hopefully, I didn't get too much and it didn't get on the actual clear part that uh, the, the clear window glass, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna glue the two fuselage halves together. And I've already got the wings glued together. Wasn't too, wasn't uh, really any issues with that. I do have the seam line running along the leading edge and I'll show you how I take care of that. It's pretty simple. It's pretty much how I do it on every, every, uh, every kit that I do. I'll just uh, run some sandpaper along the edge just to, you can see here. There's where it beat it up a little bit. And I'm gonna just run the sandpaper along there and uh, and then I'll use some of my filler to fill that in and then sand it smooth and then rescribe. Now with the BF-109, apparently there's a seam line that runs along the two halves of the fuselage on the real thing, but it is apparently pretty hard to see. Okay, now this does fit together pretty well but I'm gonna try not to have to sand away that seam line and then rescribe one. I know I could probably get away with just uh, sanding it away and filling in, filling the seam line in, and then um, and 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 just leaving it like that. But I want to try to be as accurate as possible on the exterior. Now, a lot of times when you're trying to join two pieces like this and you don't want to have to fill in the seam line. The, the way the part is molded, there's a little bit of a lip. And what I like to do if I'm in, in, in this case, where I wanna keep that seam line or a panel line, um, I'll take a little bit of thousand grit sandpaper and I'm just gonna go along and just try to sand away that little bitty lip. It's hard to see. It probably won't be able to pick it up on camera. I don't wanna use anything uh, more coarse than maybe like a thousand grit because I don't want to have it like caved in to where it's a real prominent seam line because from my understanding this isn't a real prominent seam line on the real thing. So I just wipe away that and that should be good okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and tape this up. I'm gonna glue this part last because Whenever I glue these, I don't want to really squeeze it together and then get a bead. I basically just want to have it nice and tight, put a bead of uh, extra thin down, and leave it. I don't, I don't want to have to mess with it after that. So, um, looks like there might, I might have to squeeze a little bit right there. I don't want to have to squeeze this. So... I'm going to glue the parts down that I am going to sand, like right along here and right along where this uh, block is to mimic the engine, and then right along the bottom, and then along the back here. So I'm going to get those glued down, let those dry. I may need to sand that away just a little bit. Okay, so we'll just tape this down, get it lined up tape it down and then I'll glue these other parts that I want glued down. Now I typically, I typically don't like to put tape where I'm gonna glue because the extra thin will get in here and spread out along the tape. Um, but this is going to be covered, so I'm really not concerned about that. So I'm going to put a little bit of extra thin right along here. 
line it up. I want to get this even right up here because this is going to be pretty prominent. And I don't want to have a step right along here because that's going to throw everything off because of the engine cow piece that goes up here. Uh, and, and I want to do the least amount of sanding and filling as possible right along this upper part right here. So that's why I'm starting here to make sure that this is, there is no step. So all I have to do is come in and I can maybe scrape away that seam and then maybe do a little bit of filling and some a little bit of sanding. Okay, run some extra thin along here. Just like so. Check this and make sure that it's With this uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Quick Setting, I really like it. It does uh, set up a lot quicker than the regular uh, Extra Thin. So if I want something to join pretty quickly, this is what I use. Pretty much what I use on, on just about everything. If I, if, I wanna, if I wanna glue something down and have it uh, take a little bit longer, like say I'm, I'm gluing down landing gear that I want to be able to maneuver around and not have too much of an issue with, then I may use the Tamiya regular extra thin. But uh, for pretty much most everything, I just use this quick setting stuff. Now there is some detail right here, which I'm gonna have to rescribe, which isn't that big of a deal. It's on the bottom. So if I mess it up, I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be that noticeable. Try to keep it from having a step. My big issue is not having a step along these parts. Okay. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to glue these, the, uh, the tail down. Now I don't want to press too hard because the, uh, the, the rudder fits in there and I don't want to have to, I don't want to squeeze this so tight that the rudder's not going to fit in the little slots there. And if I don't get this, the, uh, the, the seam line along the top and the bottom right, I'll just have to sand it and rescribe it. It's not that big of a deal. But uh, this will take a little bit more time than if I get it right from the get-go. Okay, so I'm going to leave this the way it is. And then once this dries, and I'm going to come back and just run a bead along the the uh, the two halves here and hopefully I can keep that seam line I don't know something's not fitting exactly right right along here so I don't know I may just end up filling it in who knows yeah I might be able to get away with it we'll see all right so I'll see you in a bit all right fellas uh, everything's dried I think I'm happy with the seam along the top and the bottom so we're keeping those it's probably a little more bit more prominent than what it is in in real life on the real thing but uh it's there and i'm, I'm gonna stick with it i think it looks okay uh 
Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some seam cleanup and I'm gonna use my Gunmetal Pigment and CA, which is my favorite. If you've watched my videos, I, I brag about it all the time. It's just, oh, it's so awesome. Uh, some of you guys have tried it and really liked it. Some probably have tried it and didn't like it, but uh, it's my favorite. So uh, when I build a model, I like to build as many sub assemblies as I can before paint and then uh, do as much seam cleanup at the same time uh, that I can because I had, I had uh, built these the first day, put the wings together, so now I've got seams to clean up. Rather than do those yesterday, I waited for this to dry so I can do the fuselage and the wings seam cleanup at the same time, seam filling. So uh, we'll go ahead and throw some uh, Zappa Gap CA in here and mix it up. I've already got some of my metallic pigment in there. I'll just take a toothpick. For some of you newer viewers who've never seen this before, it's like a mainstay on my channel. I, I love this stuff. I forgot where I picked this up at. I picked it up from somewhere. And some of you guys that have seen me do this a thousand times, you can fast, you know, probably be fast forwarding through this or just shutting the, shutting the video off. But uh, what I like about this is you can mix it up to any thickness you want. You can make it thinner or thicker. The thicker it is, which means you add more gunmetal pigment, the easier it is to sand. The thinner it is, the harder it is to sand because it's mostly CA glue. Uh, it is messy. That's one of the, the main downfalls with this. It is messy. It doesn't shrink. However, you can get ghost seaming with this because what I found, what I think causes ghost seaming is you don't let enough time to dry after you've used to me extra thin. Uh, if I've, I've waited like four or five days after using to me extra thin and then use this stuff and I don't get any ghost seaming. But uh, after a couple days, uh, a day or two, um, if, if, I, if I try to fill this in within a day or two, I may get ghost seaming. So uh, just FYI. So it's not like, you know, foolproof. But this stuff does not shrink after it is dried. So... I'm just gonna take some of this stuff and put it along here. I seem to get got a little bit more step than what I what I thought I did. I'd concentrated on this, trying to get it without a step right along the top here, but I still managed to get a step in there somehow. I'm not sure how that is, but I've got my little bitty glue looper, and I'm gonna come in here. Now, I don't want to get any CA glue and metallic pigment in that little detail right there. If I can help it. Okay. I'm going to take my accelerator or kicker. This is Bob Smith's Industries Instaset. And somebody asked me the other day about what is kicker. And if you don't use CA glue or kicker, um, it's just basically accelerates the drying process for CA glue and uh, it like instantly makes it makes it dry. So let me get a paper towel. It's already dry. Oop. And I'm going to come along here, build it up just a little bit more. Now, around something like this, I'm not going to take a big chunk of, I'm going to try to work small right up here. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside and I'll show you how I do the wings. <clears throat> Now, on the wings, as I showed in the last part of the video, um, right at the leading edges, it's not very clean. And I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but it's not the cleanest uh, mating that I've ever done before. So there's a little bit of overlap and there's a little bit of goo of the plastic that had melted out. So what I like to do is I'll take some like 600 grit sandpaper 
And I like to use sandpaper on the leading edges of the, of the wings rather than uh, like a sanding stick. And I'm just gonna lightly sand down some of those bigger uh, areas where like the, the, the glue had seeped out and caused like little bubbles. And now I've got a little bit of an edge right right there where it's a you know just uneven. So now I'm gonna take my glue looper. And sometimes the CA glue will dry on the glue looper. And then all you have to do is take a lighter and burn it off. All right, so now I'm gonna take my glue looper and I'm just gonna run it right along the edge, the leading edge of that wing. Now, depending on how thick or thin this is, it has a tendency to run into the panel lines like you see there. And you just have to dig it out with a, uh, clean out that panel line with a uh, razor saw, which I'm gonna have to rescribe some of these panel lines right along this leading edge anyway. So I'm just coming in here. And this usually takes a couple passes and then I can smooth and feather everything out. What I don't want to do is sand so much plastic away that I, I um, change the shape of the leading edge of the wings. I don't want a flat spot and I don't want to dig it in to where it doesn't, uh, it's, it's, um, it deforms it to a point where it's not like straight across like it's supposed to be. So now I'll take my kicker and I'm just gonna put some kicker on here. Now you can spray this, but uh, when you sp use the spray part where you just spray the kicker, it wastes a lot more if I just put like little, if I just run it along the edge with the, the tube here. I waste, I, I don't waste as much. All right, so let me grab a thin sanding stick. I've got these thin sanding sticks. I actually need to get more. Some are better than others. I've got these cheaper ones here. But along this top, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a small sanding stick and I'm going to slowly sand away my filler material. And this way I'm not, I'm not uh, totally obliterating detail that I don't want to obliterate. I'm just slowly going to, man, my wife's wearing high heel shoes and walking around stomping on the floor. So this is a fairly coarse one. I don't know what the number on it is. But this is a fairly coarse sanding stick here. So this is basically, it's gonna put a lot of scratches in it, but it's going to um, really hog away that material, okay? Let me get some isopropyl alcohol. This is IPA. I'm gonna careful not to harm my paintwork on the inside of my cockpit there. All right, now there are, you can see right there where it's shiny. I need to fill in a little bit more right there. I'll probably need to hog away a little bit more material. There's a couple other spots. So what I'll do is I'll take my filler material I'm going to put it 
right there. And right there. Okay. Hit it with my kicker. And when you hit it with the kicker, if you got a lot on there, a lot of times it'll like spread out. So <clears throat> just keep that in mind. I'm lightly sanding. I'm letting the sanding stick do the work. I'm not pushing real hard. And that's, uh, that's what you should do when you sand. Let the sanding, either <clears throat> sandpaper or the sanding stick, do the work. You don't want to push in too hard, okay? And it is easy to go overboard with this. So now I'm going to get... A sanding stick and I need more of these. This is a, a finer sanding stick. Now I'm going to start removing the scratches with this. And then I will get an even more fine sanding stick. Kylie's bagels are ready. She's going out to the car. And then this is a even, I can even get finer than this. I've got some other sanding sticks that are even more fine. Uh, I think this will be good enough. Now I can take some, uh, let's grab some of my 1000 grit sandpaper, which used. Just to polish it up a little bit. All right. Some isopropyl alcohol. <clears throat> now I can take a razor saw and just make sure that this panel line right here is connected. <clears throat> and there we go. Voila. All right, so that's taken care of. Let me grab the engine cowl and we'll see how it fits up here to make sure that it fits the way it's supposed to. And there we go. All right, good deal. So <clears throat> on this wing over here, uh, I will, let's go ahead and take my sandpaper and I'm just going to try to feather this out and then we'll check it and see if we got any, if we need to refill it, which I'm sure we probably will. And again, I'm not letting the sandpaper do the work. And I don't want to, want to alter the shape of that leading edge. And I don't know if I can get the light to shine on it. But there are a couple of spots, like right there, I need to fill in. So I'm just going to go over this again. Just like so. And repeat the process until I get a nice, rounded 
clean leading edge of my wing. <clears throat> All right, simple as that. So I'm gonna get on with sanding this and uh, uh, just repeat those steps as is, is uh, necessary and then I'll come back in with my razor saw and I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, add in add in back the uh, the panel lines right along the leading edge and then uh, we'll probably add some rivet detail to this after I uh, get this all together so see you in a bit okay fellas so I've got uh, the glass on I've got all the other parts on the fuselage and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some rivet detail. Now, I've already added rivet detail to the wings using my Rosie the Riveter tool. And uh, this one, I'm using the 0.55 millimeter. And what I've done is just on Google Images, I pulled up some uh, blueprints that uh, show the BF109 uh, rivet detail. So... Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this before I install the wings just because it's easier to do. So let me set this aside. And how I'm going to do this, I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm not going to be too particular about being 100% exact. So I am just, like I said, eyeballing it. And I've cut up strips of tape about, let's see four millimeters wide, which I've estimated is about the spacing that I need. So looking at my, my uh, blueprints here, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And it looks like I'm gonna just start off right about here. and bring it up to <clears throat> okay look about right okay so what i'm doing is i'm starting off using this one is going to be my reference one my reference uh starting point so i've got my tape lined up on the model and I'm just going to take my riveter, riveting tool and I'm going to make one pass and I'm just going to follow that tape right along here just like so. Okay, all right, so now I've got a nice rivet mark, and it's not like totally in your face, but it does add a little bit more detail. All right, so let's figure out what we're going to do next. Now, let me get another piece of tape, and I'm going to, uh, looks like we've got like right along here. I'm going to go ahead and put that one in just so I can have a little bit more reference. Something to go off of. And again, I'm just eyeballing this. I could be, I could do, you know, get my measuring tools out and measure, but eh, I'm not going to do that. Now, whenever I do this riveting tool, whenever I use this, it's got two sides and I like to when at all possible, use this side that I can actually see the point of um, right next to the tape. Because if I go this way, it's kind of hard for me to see that edge of that tape. But if I, I turn it around and I have the actual cutting part right next to the tape, I can see it a lot better. And again, one pass. Okay, all right, now I've got that line. 
And what other one do we have? Okay, that looks like... Now, right along this panel line, it looks like there are rivet marks. So rather than put down tape, I'm just going to eyeball it and go right along that panel line and try to keep it the same distance all the way down. Turn it around so my eyeballs face in the wheel. And do the same thing. All right, just like that. Now, <clears throat> for this, uh, for these other ones, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to eyeball it, use my tape as a guide, and um, and just fill in the rest of the rivets. And that's basically how I do my rivet detail. Now there have been other kits where I've actually measured and you know done done some other things, but uh, just eyeballing it, I think it's going to suffice for this project, and I think that looks pretty nice. So, all right, I'm going to get on with this and then uh, get the wings glued down. Now, when I glue these wings down, I'm going to have to fill in. They do fit nice along the uh, the join right along here, but right along there, I'm going to have to fill in that little bitty seam line right there with some CA glue and metallic pigment. But uh, that's not going to be that big of a deal. Other than that, I think we're going to be good with um, all the seam works. Now, I am going to leave the uh, the stabilizers off so I can paint a little bit easier. Uh, there are some struts that go on here. So I will install those as well as the struts after I get everything painted. I think that's probably the way to go with this specific kit. So I'm going to get this taken care of and I'll see you in a bit. All right, fellas, uh, I've got it all put together and it's almost ready for paint. I just need to wipe it down, but I took care of the seam right along that little portion right there. And it's it's a difficult spot to, to take care of, but just a little bit of CA glue and metallic pigment. And I rolled uh, a paper towel or a piece of sanding paper. I just made a little roll out of it. And I was able to gradually knock that down and get that smoothed out. So that should be good to go. Now, <clears throat> I am prepping for paint. So what I'm gonna do is obviously I'm wearing a glove because I wanna remove the oils and any other greeblies that I have on there from sanding and, and handling. So I've got some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just going to put some on a paper towel. And uh, before I get primer on this, I'm not gonna touch this with bare hands once I wipe it down. So. I'm just gonna go over the whole model with some IPA, get all the oils and greeblies off. And I should be good to go. Now, I did leave the, I don't know if these are flaps or alerons, I forget which are which, are which. but uh, these attach in here just like so. So I'm gonna paint these separately and just make it a little bit easier. Uh, as well as, I think I mentioned this before, the horizontal stabilizers. The, uh, they fit in here pretty easily without much fuss, just like so. And then there are a couple struts that go on here, just these little things here. So I'm going to leave these off just because it's going to make it so much easier to paint with those off of there. And they don't look like they're going to be too much of a problem to, uh, to install once it's painted. Now, typically, I really do like to stall, install as much as I can uh, before I paint. But in this case, these uh, th this is going to be th these are going to be fine parts to to leave off. All right, so there we go. Now, uh, I will I'm going to go ahead and get set up. I'll wipe these down, and then I'll take. And I like these little organizers. I think I showed these on a video a long time ago, but these are just little meal trays that I got and they work really well for keeping my parts separated. And I'll get my little clips out here. And these are just some cheap clips that I picked up from my local farm and home. And I'm just gonna start clipping these things, get them ready for paint so I don't have to actually touch the part when I paint it. I see a lot of guys holding the part itself when they paint it, and I just, I don't like doing that. It's not, uh, I like to be able to paint it and not touch it and sit it down and let it dry. Uh, let's see, as far as these go, this will fit on here just like so. And then again, I'll wipe these down as well. 
got a little IPA. Now, once I do start, right before I go to paint, I'll take a tack cloth like this, just a sticky cloth, and I'll go over it just to get some greeblies off. Now, you're probably going to get small little pieces of flurm and little particles that get into your paint, uh, but this is going to get any of that uh, debris from the paper towel off there prior to paint. So, all right, so I'm gonna get to uh, putting these together. Oh, one other thing. Now, the guns, there's, um, these are little guns that come in the kit and you're supposed to glue them into the wing here, just like so. I didn't like them, they're really tiny and they just don't look that good. So what I did is I just cut some brass tubing and yeah, it's not going to have, you know, the same, uh, that little doohickey on the end there that you see. It's not going to have that, but it's just, I think it, it will look a little bit better. And then I'll just glue these in there just like that when I'm done painting. So uh, just a little extra thing. Uh, and so that's about it. I'll get to spraying some primer and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching, fellas.